Welcome to our fourth episode of the Revival History series. We're so excited this week to talk about a little-known move of God called the Layman's Prayer Revival. I want you to imagine you're gripped with a vision, you're heading into the city to walk out a simple obedience, which was to hand out 60,000 flyers because you've been so gripped by a word of the Lord. You're so sure that God's about to move. But I want you to imagine as well that days after those 60,000 flyers are handed out, that 30 minutes into your first prayer meeting that you invited everyone to, no one's there. 30 minutes in, your first couple people finally arrive, and by the end of your first hour, six people have participated in your prayer meeting. How did a tiny little seemingly failed prayer meeting turn into a movement that shook entire nations in multiple continents of the earth. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, before we jump into the story, talk about three things to look for as threads and themes in this story that relate to our own lives. Number one, the power of never giving up. Number two, the power of prayer, enduring in prayer, and prayer transforming our cities and nations. Number three, we're going to talk about grassroots activation, where every believer is activated to be a part of revival and reformation. All right, let's jump into this incredible story. Story begins in New York City. We are in the year 1857. This is a long time ago, and just a little backdrop so that we understand the time that we're in is that we're at the tail end, kind of the the end of the Second Great Awakening. And in fact, as the Second Great Awakening ended, many people are looking on at America going, is there hope for Christianity in the future of America? It was said over New York City as it was moving into more and more success and more and more business people were moving into the city. It was getting more and more fast paced. Is there any room or is there any priority or value for God any longer. In fact, some philosophers of the day were quoted as saying that in one generation, Christianity would cease to exist in New York City or in America at large. But how many know God had another plan? A young missionary named Jeremiah Lamphere, who had been a businessman, retired, felt called to evangelism and disciple making. He moved into New York City and uh, he was going house to house, door to door, sharing the gospel, praying for people. In the midst of that, though, he often found himself overwhelmed and discouraged. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in that place where you are walking forward in a vision or something God's put in your heart and discouragement just sets in? Just wonder, how do I keep doing this? I think we've all felt that way at times, and that's how Jeremiah felt. One of those days, he had a particularly remarkable encounter with God in about an hour span of time as he just spent time in prayer. And at the end of that hour, he got up as if refreshed by heaven's perspective, renewed in vision, feeling the nearness and the closeness of God. And he said to himself, maybe this is the key for New York City. Maybe if the businessmen of this busy city could encounter God in an hour of prayer, it would change everything. So as this lands in his heart, he decides to write out 60,000 flyers to invite all the people in the surrounding areas of the church that he worked at, businessmen, people from their homes, to invite them to a one-hour prayer meeting midweek. So he hands out all the flyers, and I just want you to imagine being Jeremiah in that moment. You've had an encounter with God It was super refreshing. You could feel his presence, his tangible presence. And when you get up from those moments, you feel invincible. You feel like we could do anything, God. What do you want to do? Say it and we'll do it. So then you get these remarkable downloads and visions and you start to walk them out. So much so, so much ambition. They didn't just be like, hey, let's start with 10 or let's start with 20 or maybe 100. You make 60,000 flyers. You're going big. And that's Jeremiah Lamphere. His vision is so big. Why? He just encountered honored a big God and he felt anything was possible. But how many have also been in the place where your big vision in the encounter feels like all of a sudden there's nothing left when you begin to walk it out, hitting walls and possibilities. So Jeremiah hands out the flyers as I started the story with. He waits on that first day expecting. Can you imagine we went into the prayer room that day? He's hanging out in the room. He's checking his watch. He's getting closer to noon, which was the prayer meeting, and no one comes. Come on, 60,000 invitations and no one comes? What would you do in this moment? 
Well, Jeremiah persevered. By the end of his first meeting, six people had come. I think maybe I'd have given up at that point. But the scriptures say, don't despise the day of small beginnings. And I'm so glad that Jeremiah didn't give up on a grand vision that came from an encounter with God just because it was hard. He persevered. The next week, a few more people came. The next week, a few more. Soon, every week, the prayer meetings were doubling. Soon, they were filling every room in the church with a separate prayer meeting. In fact, the hallways and the stairwells were filled with prayer meetings because because so many people were coming. It was around this time that Jeremiah made a decision to move it from one day a week to every weekday, 12 to one, that people could come and pray. And soon they expanded the borders of that church and multiple churches across the city of New York were filled from 12 to one with people simply showing up and praying. It was spontaneous. At times they would just begin to sing a song and one person would begin to sing and everybody else would join in. After that, they'd go back into prayer, praying for lost uh, relatives and family members, and then back into worship. They were truly grassroots. This wasn't led by famous people with really great websites and really dynamic personalities. This was fueled by hungry believers, by men and women who were just passionate about Jesus and wanted to see him get glory in their city and in their nation. Now, critical moment take you into that multiplied this from New York City to the entire eastern seaboard of America. There's a newspaper reporter, an editor, sitting at his desk one day looking out his window and he hears the, the, the whistle blow for the factories nearby signaling that it was lunchtime. Kind of looks up as he hears the whistle blow and he looks out his window shocked because people are running out of the factories. And now if you're a newspaper editor, you're always looking for a new you know, piece of news, something to report, something that's exciting. So he sees this and he's dumbfounded. Why is everyone running out of their factories and where are they going? So he gets a handful of his reporters and he sends them out and he says, follow the people and find out what's happening. About an hour later, the reporters come back and they'll go, you're never going to believe this. The people were running to the nearest church, not the church they might go to on Sunday, just whatever building was nearest to them. They were walking into these churches where prayer was already going and the whole assembly was gathered together, standing, worshiping, praying. And he explained this back and forth rhythm of worship and prayer. The editor is so amazed, he writes a story in the column in the newspaper and that column would go viral as different cities and different church groups and different believers across America read these newspaper clippings. They thought if they're doing it in New York, we should do it in Baltimore. We should do it in Philadelphia. We should do it in Chicago. We should do it across America. And soon these noon hour prayer meetings were erupting all over the nation. One man's simple obedience and willingness to not give up have now catalyzed a grassroots movement movement where every believer is getting to participate and the fuel and the power of the whole thing is prayer. Believing that as we speak to God, God is intervening in our nations. Now, let's move into the fruit of this story because it's remarkable. Is that as this began to uh, go across America, it, it actually began to change the very rhythm in the schedule of cities. It was said you could walk down New York City at 1230 in the middle of the day when everyone should be eating lunch and going shopping and not find a single store open in downtown New York. Can you even imagine? And they had signs actually that they had made that they would flip over in the window like open and close, but instead it said at the prayer meeting. And cities like this all across America were emptying out even workplaces just to pray and to cry out to God to move in America. And that truly began to happen. Remarkable stories of salvation. It's said that in a two-year window of time, 1857, 1858, into 1859, that two million Americans came to salvation. Not just those who were backslidden, not just church transfers, two million people came to faith. Numerous stories of people walking and kind of stumbling by the prayer meeting, curious what's going on in there, walking in the back and getting radically saved as they encountered the presence of God and the power of God. Numerous stories where they would be gathered in the prayer meeting one day and by name they'd be praying for a lost brother or sister or a parent. And the next day that brother or sister would be saved 
and at the prayer meeting now praying for their lost family members as well. One remarkable account that I read just recently, and there were multiple of these, were ships that were sailing into New York City. And if you've ever kind of read about or been aware of what the culture of sailing would have been in the 1800s, they weren't known as the most righteous people on the earth. And there are documented, written documents of, of ships sailing into New York City, and maybe they'd be you know, a few miles out or a mile out, and captains would walk onto the deck of their ships and find their you know, heathen sailors on their knees repenting for their sins. And the ship captains are like, what's going on here? Like, what, what is happening? And they, these guys are travailing under the conviction of their sins. They would get into New York Harbor, step, step onto the docks and go, hey, my ship basically just encountered God. And what's happening here? And then they would hear the stories of the noon hour prayer meetings. It was literally like it established a perimeter of God's presence. And when people came into that perimeter, they were affected by a tangible outpouring of God's power. Incredible stories like this documented about the layman's prayer revival. Now, as we look to the future and to our next episodes, how did Jeremiah Lamphere's simple obedience, uh, a seemingly failed prayer meeting, now exploding into a movement across America, how did it actually jump the ocean and begin to affect Europe and all the way into Southern Africa? Stay tuned because next time we're gonna talk about the Ulster Revival. All right, before we end this session, let's make it personal. So important that every one of these stories is not just inspiration or a cool story, but it's life activation, it's transformation. Number one, uh, let's, let's allow Jeremiah Lamphere's life to be a megaphone to our lives today. Don't give up. If God said it, he's going to do it. It might not be in our timing. And it might not be the way that we thought it was going to happen. But never give up on the word of the Lord. Aren't you glad that he didn't give up after six people showed up at his prayer meeting? We often uh, fall into the trap of wanting immediate success. God gave me a vision. I was obedient. And, and 200 people didn't come. I give up. And that is simply not the way that God has moved in history. He's moved through the woman or he's moved through the man that stood on the word of God and said, you said it and I will not give up. Number two, I believe that the layman's prayer revival is an incredible declaration to us today of the importance and the significance of prayer. Prayer can all too easily become like an appetizer, maybe to real ministry or to real life or to something else we consider really valuable. It can become a little five minute moment or a 10 minute moment, but I just want you to dream with me for a moment. What would it look like to not only see prayer reestablished in families where moms, dads, and kids are praying together regularly, but imagine a church that would raise regularly pray, not just in an evening prayer meeting, but in our normal services, setting aside time to go turn with your neighbor right now, and let's begin to cry out to God for revival in our city. Let's believe together for a prayer awakening across our nation, across our churches, and into our families. And not just courtesy prayer, not just if you want to, but maybe you won't, but if you want to, it'd be awesome, God. Not little courtesy prayers. I'm talking about prevailing prayer. I'm talking about holding God to to the promises that he has made. I'm talking about reminding him of his nature and his character and asking that he would pour out his spirit on our cities and our nations. Prayer that prevails against darkness, against the lies of the enemy, overcoming prayer. Number three, application, and this is so near and dear, this is the bullseye of the Commission of the City movement, is the empowerment of the everyday believer. Oftentimes we get a vision or an idea from God, we have the encounter like Jeremiah Lamphere, and then we're like, now I need the website, the Instagram followers, I need, the, uh, you know, I, I need someone to bless me, I need a leader to kind of acknowledge me, and, and instead, Jeremiah just walked in simple obedience. Can you imagine if millions of Christians just walked in simple obedience? This is is a grassroots movement. This is everyday believers being empowered to walk out the kingdom. This is obedience today, not five years from now when I feel a little more mature, or I feel I've got it all together. No, what has God said to you? And can you imagine if every believer simply heard and obeyed God, we'd have overnight revival. Can you imagine all the activation, all the prayer, all the sharing of the gospel, all the praying of the sick, for the sick, all of the reformation and the God ideas that would be birthed in society if we simply believed that God wanted to move in us and God wanted to move through us. It is the activation of the everyday believer.